straight up. Happy Monday, happy Monday, happy Monday, happy Monday, happy Monday. Man, I thought I did everything correct, and yet I failed again. But as long as I have breath in my body, I have another opportunity to get this right. That's right. I was actually going to put this in landscape mode again, and I was testing out um, my mic and making sure everything was up to par, and guess what happened? I put it in landscape mode, and because I was lighting my incense, I totally dropped the ball, and the show has started, so I can't change the video settings. So, as they say in, excuse me, as they say in show business, the show must go on. Um, happy Monday, everyone. Happy Monday. Um, I'm blessed. I'm alive. I got breath in my body. I hope you feel the same way, too. Um, I'm going to come to you uh, right now. And right now, as the title of this live stream says, this is going to be called uh, My Daily Bread and My Verse of the Day. And I am experiencing things in real time as I'm doing this. I just looked at my other camera. My camera's like, well, your video storage is full. Your video storage is full. Well, sometimes you're going to run into these little nuances. And, you know, just like I said before, the show must go on. So I'm not going to let nothing uh, take away from what I would like to do. I would just continue to learn and improve upon it um, as the days um, forge ahead. So thank you guys so much so for being with me today. I got the comments open early. I don't want to miss anyone's comments. Um, I know the last few times I have missed people's comments and waited to the end of the broadcast, but not today. Today, I want to interact. I want to uh, speak to. I want to address. And I want to let everyone know, thank you guys so much. I had 11 people uh, view my podcast on Apple. And for me, that was uh, that's a big accomplishment because no one has to listen to anything I say. No one has to listen to my voice. So the fact that someone was willing to listen to me uh, means everything to me. So I don't take it for granted. I never will. I will always choose to remain uh, humble, open, and transparent because uh, that's how I live and foster my life now. Um, and with that being said, I think I got a little bit more storage. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the record button and continue on. Um, I wanted to keep this brief because... Um, I don't want to take a lot of your time if I don't have a purpose um, for the conversation. So obviously today's conversation, we're going to start um, and we're going to get right into things. Uh, we're going to go ahead and discuss the verse of the day. I got a verse of the day today. It's coming from Mama Nisi and Mama Nisi provided me with a new scripture. So let me go ahead and open this up. Uh, today's verse of the day comes from 1 Chronicles 16.24. It says, Declare his glory among the nation, his marvelous deeds among all people. And um, if you guys recall what I was talking to you about last week um, on my user-generated era was that I had someone in my comments saying, hey, um, I don't find that praying out loud and praying to the masses is appropriate. And for me, I'm like, look, I'm going to do what I'm going to do because I'm not out here doing it and petitioning everyone for attention. I actually believe in prayer. I actually practice prayer. Prayer is part of my uh, daily regimen. I go to sleep with prayer. I wake up with prayer. I thank God throughout the day. In fact, I'm thanking God right now because I know the week prior to we were talking about secular content and I really had had some struggles because there was an album by Killer Mike that had came out and it was Grammy nominated and won three Grammys. And I was like, I really want to listen to this album. But I had this disposition because of my godmother and spirits. And we're talking like way back in 1999. I remember when the Wines came out with the Wines Phase 2. Um, she allowed no music inside her home that was secular. Of course, as children, we snuck and listened to it. And we ran the risk of being in trouble um, if we played it inside her home. But did I stop these kids? It sure did not. And just like that... My whole thing got filled up once again, and I sit there and said, you know what, God, I ain't going to let that be a distraction. God, I'm not going to let my phone take me away from what I'm doing because I have people watching, and I do not want to not, not be a blessing. It's discouraging because I did not prepare for my phone to, be, uh, to have the, the storage full, but guess what? 
the storage is full. There's nothing I can do about that. So it is what it is. And um, right here, I got my incense going. You can't really see it, but it's burning. So I'm on a clock, and I only plan to take a little bit of your time today. Uh, I want to start being consistent with the time. Um, so I'm telling myself before 2 o'clock, I'm going to release my daily bread, and I'm going to do the verse of the day. Why? Because majority of my life, I have been a, a second shifter. Um, a second shifter meaning that I always had to go in in the afternoons. Even when my kids were born, I would have to work the... Um, I believe it was, if I'm correct, it was uh, the 4.30 or like we used to go on 5 to 3.30 at Chrysler um, off Stickney Avenue in Toledo. But I would literally have to leave the house like 3.30, 3.45 if I was out hollering. And then when I moved into the town, I could be as late as like 4.15. But I was always a second second shifter. Um, so uh, when I used to be in my tugger doing the blue route, um, I used to listen to music and listen to inspirational um, um, podcasts and things of that nature that get me through the day. So I said to myself, you know, uh, God's giving me the spirit to do this and I'm becoming very consistent with it. So I want to make sure I got some content for my second shifters um, more so than anyone else, because I know what it's like to work second shift, the graveyard shift, all that good stuff. And I know what it means for someone to have a podcast and be like, yo, what up, Toledo? <laughs> it brings straight straight up pride and joy to me. Um, in addition to that, I want to say hello, Montgomery, because Montgomery, Alabama is my new home. I've been here for several years now. I absolutely love it. Um, I know uh, one of the things I hear consistently across the world is that, oh, my gosh, you know, my hometown I don't know how people can live there and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, the funny thing is people used to say the same thing about Toledo and people say the same thing about Montgomery. And uh, it's all about the perspective of the individual. But let me jump into this. I wanted to give you guys some food for thought because not only did I have a segment about speaking out loud, I also had another segment um, gearing towards a conversation my wife and I had last week. Um, as I told you guys, when I gave myself back to God and renewed my relationship with God, there was a lot of things I walked away from. And one of the things I walked away from was uh, tarot cards. And I used to love pulling my tarot cards and then uh, my zodiac sign and things of that nature. Well, my wife, daughter, and I were having a conversation, and my daughter was making reference to astrology, and my wife was giving her disposition on it. And from my interpretation of the conversation, it sounded as if astrology um, might not be against the Bible. So, you know me, I wanted to do my due diligence. And if anybody uh, wants to uh, chime in, please leave a comment um, because I would love to get your feedback on it. Um, but I pulled up something and I wanted to share it with you uh, for my food for thought for the day. Um, and it's in reference to the obvious astrology. And it says, Astrology, the practice of seeking knowledge or guidance through the stars and planets, is addressed indirectly in the Bible through its teachings of on idolatry and deviations. The Word of God encourages us to seek guidance, wisdom, and understanding directly from Him, rather than through created things or practices that led us away from reliance on God. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 10 through 12, offer a clear directive regarding practices such as deviations and seeking omens. My wife always gets on me when I say the word omens, and the dictionary says there's also a term for omens that does nothing, that does not correlate to uh, spiritual wickedness. Uh, so I find that funny that I was there, but let me uh, forge ahead. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses deviations, or an observer of time, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a, this is N-E-C-R-O-M-A-N-C-R, -E necromancer, I'm assuming that's what that means, I'm not going to look it up, because we have to forge ahead. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, 
And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth do drive them out before thee. Additionally, Isaiah 47, 13 through 14 speaks to the futility and ultimate disappointment in relying on astrologers and celestial signs for guidance. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsel. Let now the astrologers, the strategizers, the monthly prog... I'm going to read this stuff. About, let me spell it out. Prognosticators, prognosticators, okay, stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as subtle or stubble, the fire shall burn them, they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame, there shall not be a cool to warm at, a cold to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. These passages reflect a broader biblical principle that our trust, hope, and faith should be placed in God alone. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth, and he has revealed himself and his will through his word. Seeking guidance through astrology can divert our hearts from the true source of wisdom and knowledge, leading us away from a relationship with God. The Bible teaches us to speak God through prayer, the study of scripture, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit for direction and answers in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm just going to go ahead and speak what I see and what I take from that. And basically, from my understanding, is that this is a situation where we got to apply wisdom, right? It says in the Bible, um, especially when I was reviewing secular content and looking at secular uh, music and whatnot, is that there are secular artists that praise God and have uh, tracks in reference to God. Uh, you look no further than R. Kelly. R. Kelly has made some amazing gospel tracks. And on the flip side, R. Kelly has been accused of allegedly doing some things and convicted of doing some things that don't necessarily coincide with the Bible. So, you know, use food, use wisdom, not food for thought. So in that regard, um, I would have to say astrology to me is no different than like a tarot card. Um, if it has the potential to lead your understanding away from God and for you to lean on this as a way of um, getting, shall I say, answers or um, uh, coming to um, conclusions without consulting God, then for me, I'm like, yeah, it might not necessarily be uh, something that you should consider um, adding to your repertoire. So for me, I'm actually happy um, that I was able to withdraw myself from my spiritual um, understanding of things and start to lean more so on God. Why? Because uh, the word was always rooted in me as a child. And now as a man, I'm coming back to it, but I'm coming back to it after, you know, living life and living life the way that I seen fit. Um, and honestly, it's like literally the most rewarding thing ever um, to have this relationship and for God to give me uh, grace and mercy and allow me to proclaim um, his awesomeness um, because I was such a uh, rebellious soul that uh, um, those who know me, I'm actually setting an appointment because I know uh, they say, uh, I want to say Leviticus or uh, I believe is a Leviticus 11:19 where we use from the Old Testament to say, okay, well, the Old Testament is not applicable no more because we are covered um, in the blood of Christ. Jesus sacrificed his life for us. So we all adhere to the New Testament and tattoos are now permissible because everyone has a lot of tattoos. And I'm like, I'm still on the fence, but I'm like, God, if I can get away with doing one more tattoo, um, the tattoo that I would most like to get rid of and cover up is the tattoo of the devil because um, that was just pure rebellion, pure animosity, hate, whatever you would like to classify it as uh, when I got it. It wasn't rooted in good. It was rooted in showing how destructive my mind um, was at the time. And even though I'm no longer, um, or I feel I no longer resemble that person, nor am I validating that I'm no longer that individual because I am a firm believer that um, validating yourself is a 
not effective. You know, me giving myself a high five and saying I'm changed um, might not necessarily be the case because even though I go to the gym and I work out a lot and I even try to and pick up my cardio, um, I won't lie to you. I had a macadamia cookie and I had a oatmeal raisin cookie this morning. And I told my wife after this weekend, I was like, babe, I'm gonna go back. No more uh, meat. Cause over the weekend, um, we had a celebration. It was an awesome celebration. Uh, a family member of mine's, we celebrated their birthday. And we played Coquino, and we all uh, did tributes, and we played spades, and I lost on the table, but we had a good time. In fact, I got criticized. Listen, I got criticized, right? Um, when we play spades where, where I'm at now, we play, uh, we build our houses to 350. Uh, we don't do sandbags. We don't do... Uh, Joker, Joker, Deuce Ace, like where I'm from. We do a, a Big Joker, Little Joker, you know, uh, Ace High. Um, so it's a Big Joker, Little Joker, Ace High. Long story short, um, we got set on a flight, which is a 10-car spread. I thought we had it. We were going to have it. And my math was off because I do my math left to right. Um, and to me, it makes logical sense. But I got set, and I forgot to add the negative sign. And subsequently... I got embarrassed by a relative, which I don't hold no grudge or any animosity towards. Um, I only went in the back of the house last night, my brother, because I was tired and sleepy. Um, so, <laughs> uh, end up getting exposed. My math was off. Everyone was like, well, we always go up to down. I'm like, man, you can do left to right. Left to right makes sense to me. I always go left to right. And then I do, you know, what you book what you got, and then I put it on the next row. It makes perfect sense to me. A lot of people go up and down and build it up that way. Um, so we had a fun-filled weekend, and I had a lot of um, things I have not been eating as of lately. I had sweets. I had meat. In fact, uh, yesterday was the inaugural day of 2024 with me on the grill. And overwhelmingly, I did pretty, pretty good. Um, I took our youngest out there um, with the, in the pit with me and had her help me barbecue and was showing her how to smoke and grill over the fire and whatnot. And there was, uh, I was trying to be conscious of time because we had a particular time we were going to start the event. And of course, before you start the event, you cooking and doing all these great things, um, you need a refresh and then get ready for the festivities. Um, so I cooked everything consciously, put the meat inside the stove, and uh, there was one chicken leg that was in question, and I always make my meat uh, to the bone. I like it white, but there was a little bit of red, and I was like, oh, so the whole two pans, anytime anybody touched meat after that, I'm like, is your, is your meat cooked? Is your meat cooked? Like, I am not that individual. My wife always says, the one thing that you can do to me is criticize me. Um, and, I, and I live for it because criticism helps me uh, do better because I understand I am not perfect. So even though um, I, my math was off and even though we had already come to a conclusion that it was okay uh, when it was brought back up, um, I did not graciously hand over the notepad because I was turning over the notepad to my wife and what man wants to turn the notepad over to the, his wife and basically confirm the obvious. Hey, my math was off. So wife, here you go. I did not want to be that person, but uh, I did not protest long. In fact, I gave it up and we have a word that my brother-in-law said, Hey man, we got to find a new word. Um, I love being with the family that I'm with. Um, we can be playful and we can be downright silly. So one of the things I'm really good at doing um, <laughs> is uh, dangling bait. And if you don't know what dangling bait is, it's uh, basically trying to trip someone emotionally to react to what you're saying in a playful way. So let me give you the scenario. 
my mother-in-law likes to remind my wife, don't take the bait. And now all the time I'm not giving her bait, but my mother-in-law subsequently is doing reverse psychology on me and seeing if I'm going to take the bait because she's telling her daughter don't take the bait. And then at times my wife is throwing me bait and I'm not giving the bait, but then I might give the bait to one of her brothers and see which one's going to jump. And this all started years ago. Um, so there's two things in my family we know um, might happen. There's a word we say, and this word started like last November. If we get in the car, we're doing the car ride. It's only a matter of time before someone's going to say this word. And once they say this word, the longest we went in the car making reference to this word was like literally five hours. Like we drove from like San Antonio to Louisiana nonstop making reference and innuendos with this one word, which I will not say. Um, and it was hilarious. So uh, this weekend was really spent celebrating life and spending time with family. And man, it was such a good feeling that I'm still on such an emotional high. But I'm coming to the realization. Well, I, I can't come to the realization because let me just confess. I already had some meat. And I told my wife this morning, I'm like, I'm not going to eat no more meat. But then people play games. When you come to a house, and I understand this on me, I did not have Ziploc bags ready. You come to my house, I'm going to make, see, that's where they get me with the bait. One time we had a party for our oldest her sweet 16. You know how you get the little Tupperware from Walmart? Well, everyone, for some reason, decided to take my Tupperware. So I became very anal, like, don't touch my Tupperware. Don't take my Tupperware out the house. I would prefer for you to use something else. So now no one touches the Tupperware. I tried to pull out foil pants. I was willing to give pots away. Like, take these uh, baked beans and take these um, potatoes, this potato salad, because I cannot afford to eat it. Because like I said, and said, you look at me, right? I might not look like I do much, but I try to work out pretty often. But because of the things I put in my body at times, including peanut butter, which my wife tried to switch me on to like almond butter, and it's good, but it's not as filling as peanut butter. Like I can literally fall asleep with like peanut butter, a peanut butter spoon in my mouth and like, um, it's like that good. But uh, long story short, um, that's what happened and that's 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 what took place. But before I get all the way off topic and just start having a conversation with everyone, uh, let me get into the word of the day. And the word of the day is coming from the book, the first book of Samuel. Y'all know how I feel about it. God is always on time. And the first uh, scripture I'm going to read to you today is uh, 1 Samuel 16, 7. And if you don't know the significance of 1 Samuel, well, 1 Samuel um, comes after, I. And please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I believe 1 Samuel is the book of Saul. And Saul was the king before David. And I could be wrong. And I will correct myself and find out if I'm wrong later on, but not right now. But anyways, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. Let's read. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Woo! Hey, y'all understand how good that is. Let me tell you, right before I came and did my podcast, my wife's like, hey, babe, let me know when you're doing your podcast so I don't disturb. I'm like, thank you, wife. I appreciate it. But she was like, hey, honey, if you had the opportunity... Saul was the first king of Israel. Thank you, Jacquees Knows. I appreciate it. Got my first comment. Whoop, 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 whoop. Thank you. Now, did he write the book of, did he write Samuel? That's the question. Did he write Samuel? Um, anyone who's watching, please leave a comment. That's what I'm trying to figure out right now. I can't figure it out on the fly. Um, my wife had asked a question. Amen. My wife had asked a question. She said, honey, if you met you, would you be friends with yourself? And I told her a very honest, transparent answer. I said, it depends. Depends on what day it is. Depends on what mood I'm in. Because I know my heart. 
But if you had to, if I had to make friends with me based upon outward appearance, it really depends on my mood. Now, I'm born in July. A lot of people associate that with a particular zodiac sign that I don't claim no more. But a lot of the traits resonate with my personality. So I was like, yeah, it totally just depends on what day of the week it is, what the mood is. If I'm upset, if I'm happy, I said, I know my heart. And my heart, once again, self-validating. I would love myself because I love me. But me, loving me, I don't know because I'll probably be the most boringest friend ever because I only require two things in life, internet and a toilet, okay? Those two things are paramount to my existence. I don't like to go to many places um, because one time I was at an in-law's house and I went to go use the restroom and they have a particular restroom for doing number twos in. And I'm like, look, man, like you got a, a toilet, you got air freshener, I will scrub. I won't get no booty residue on your seat. He was like, yeah, I prefer for you to use one of the other laboratories in my home to defecate in. And I'm like, that's too much. The one thing I love about our home and everyone realizes in our home, we live in our home, meaning that our home is not going to be spick and span 24-7, but if we have a party, we will try. But the soap did run short yesterday, including the paper towel, so I do apologize. But we made it up for it. We had plenty of meat. <laughs> so let's get into it. It's called The Hidden Beauty, and it says, <clears throat> food for thought for my local 12. Everyone, shout out, going to Jeep. Our children needed a little coaxing to believe that it was worth putting on snorkeling gear to peer beneath the surface of the Caribbean Sea off the shore of the island of Tobago. But after they dove in, they resurfaced ecstatic. There are thousands of fishes of all different kinds. It's so beautiful. i never seen such colorful fish. Because the surface of the water looks similar to freshwater lakes near our home, our children could not have missed the beauty hidden, could have missed the beauty hidden just below the surface. When the prophet Samuel went to Bethlehem to anoint one of Jesse's sons to be the next king, Samuel saw the oldest son, Elib, and was impressed by his appearance. The prophet thought he found the right man, but God rejected Elab, reminding Samuel that he does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So Samuel asked if there were more sons. The youngest boy wasn't present but caring for the family sheep. This son, David, was summoned, and God directed Samuel to anoint him. Often we look at people only on a surface level and don't always take the time to see their inner, sometimes hidden, beauty. We don't always value what God values, but if we take the time to peer beneath the surface, we might find great treasures. Hallelujah! Amen. Let's propose the question. What inner beauty do you see in those close to you and strangers? What inner beauty do you see in those close to you and strangers? Look, everyone, I want you guys to think about that. I'm going to leave this passage open. This is my daily bread, but it comes from our daily bread. I'm on day 36. I can't give you the addition. But what I would like to do is revisit this with you guys later on. I really appreciate your guys' time. And before I close out the show, you know what I like to do. Let's just go ahead and have a word of prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, how be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. In Jesus' name, I pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, keep my local 12 factory workers and those coming and going from work safe on and off the highway. Lord, lead our weak convict us, do as you need to. Lord, continue to work with us 
And I pray your grace and mercy over all of us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Listen, everyone, thank you guys once again for watching this live stream. Um, be sure to check me out. I just finally dropped the podcast uh, last week, and this morning I got the information from Apple. They have approved it, so go check out Going Down the Rabbit Hole with John Lee. And until the next video, this is your brother in Christ, John Lee from 1983, saying, Straight up.